Welcome to Engineering Python. This is a Python programming course for engineers. In this video, I will continue our discussion about NumPy and its application in different areas. NumPy can be used to do basic statistics. Let's import NumPy as MP. Next, create a 2D NumPy array A. It's a 2x2 two two matrix. The sum function will calculate the sum of all the elements in this array. The result is 6 for this case. If we define axis equals 0, we will calculate the sum of each column. 0 plus 2 equals 2, and 1 plus 3 equals 4. If axis equals 1, we will calculate the sum of each row. 0 plus 1 equals 1, and 2 plus 3 equals 5. Note that this is still a 1D array and it's not shown vertically. This is because NumPy does not differentiate between 1D row and 1D column vectors. I'll talk more about this later in this video. The mean function will find the minimum number in this array. In this case, it's 0. The max function will find the maximum number in this array. In this case, it's 3. The mean function will calculate the mean or average of all the elements in this array. In this case, it's 1.5. The median function will calculate the median of all the elements in this array. In this case, it's also 1.5. The var function will calculate the variance, and the std function will calculate the standard deviation of all the elements in this array. They are 1.25 and 1.11 respectively. We can also use NumPy to do linear algebra. Again, A is a 2x2 two two array. The transpose of A is an operation that switches the rows and columns of the array. So the first row will become the first column, and the second row will become the second column. The INV function defined in the linear algebra submodule will calculate the inverse matrix of A. Note that not every matrix has an inverse matrix. Now we create a 2 by 1 array, B. We can use a solve function to find the solution x for this system of equations in the matrix form. A times x equals B. It is equivalent to 0 times x1 plus 1 times x2 equals 5, 2 times x1 plus 3 times x2 equals 7. Here is the solution. x1 is negative 4, and x2 is 5. The DET function will calculate the determinant of array A. In this case, it's 0 times 3 minus 2 times 1. The result is negative 2. The DIAG function will find the diagonal elements. In this example, it's just a 0 and 3. The TRACE function will calculate the sum of the diagonal elements. It's 3. There are many other commonly used linear algebra functions in NumPy, including the eigenvalue and eigenvector function, the pseudo-inverse function, the QR decomposition function, and so on. You can look them up on Google if you are interested. In a previous video, we talked about Python's built-in random library. It turns out, NumPy has also implemented many functions we can use to generate random numbers. These functions are located in the random submodule. The normal function will create a four row by four column array of normally distributed samples. The mean is 85, the standard deviation is 10. This is the result. This rand n function will generate a four row by four column array of normally distributed samples. This is the standard normal distribution. So the mean is 0, and the standard deviation is 1. These numbers are not far away from the mean 0. We can confirm that they come from the standard normal distribution by generating a large 100 by 100 array, and then check their mean and the standard deviation. The mean is negative 0 0.006, which is very close to 0. The standard deviation is 0 0.992 which is very close to 1. 
now we create a list A. It contains five integers from 0 to 4. The permutation function will randomly permute a sequence in a possibly different order. Now it's a different sequence from the original one. Do it again, we will have a new sequence. The permutation is not done in place, so the original A doesn't change. If we want to change A in place, we need to use a shuffle function. After shuffling, A is changed to a new list. There are some other commonly used random number functions. For example, you can set the random seed manually to reproduce the same results. You can generate uniformly distributed samples. It also has random integers and the binomial, beta, chi-square, and gamma distributions. If you are interested, you can look them up on Google. Some NumPy functions can do logic or Boolean operations. Let's define a list A. It contains these Boolean values, true, true, and false. The O function will check if all the elements in A are true. In this example, there is still a false. So the answer to this question is false. The any function will check if any of the elements in A is true. In this example, there are two trues, so the answer to this question is true. Now we create a 3 by 3 0 matrix. This element-wise Boolean comparison checks if all the elements are 0. The answer is true for every element. Then we apply this O function to this Boolean comparison. Because we know all the elements are true, so the answer is true. This element-wise Boolean comparison checks if all the elements are not zero. The answer is false for every element. Then we apply this any function to this Boolean comparison. Because we know all the elements are false, that is, none of them is true, so the answer is false. We may need to sort the arrays in our programs sometimes. This operation can be done using NumPy. Let's first generate a 1D array. It contains five random numbers drawn from the standard normal distribution. We use this dot notation to do the sorting. The sort method will place these numbers in ascending order. Also, sorting is done in place. After this operation, it is changed to the new sorted array. Now we create a 3 by 3 2D random array named B. We can sort B along each row by specifying the access parameter to be 1. As a result, in the first row, the smallest number is placed on the left. The second smallest is placed in the middle, and the largest number is placed on the right. This is done for every row. This is also done in place. So B is updated to the sorted array. If we change the axis from 1 to 0, we are sorting along each column. For the first column, the smallest value is on top. The second smallest is in the middle, and the largest is at the bottom. At the end of this video, I will talk about row and column vectors. NumPy doesn't differentiate between 1D row and 1D column vectors. This is very different from MATLAB. It may take some practice to get used to. For example, we create an array A. It contains one row and three columns, 1, 2, and 3. After we have done the transpose, we see B is still one row and three columns. This is because the result is still a 1D array. In NumPy, a column vector can only be represented by a 2D array. This variable B is a 2D array. It contains three rows and one column. If we do the transpose, the result is still a 2D array because these numbers are inside of two pairs of brackets. The transpose operation is not done in place, so the original B doesn't change. We can also use the reshape function to create a 2D column array. 
This part will create a 1D array. Then the dot reshape method will create a 3 row by 1 column column array like this. R underscore and C underscore are two operators that create arrays by merging numbers along one axis. R underscore is row-wise merging. It is followed immediately by a pair of brackets. These three items will be merged into one row. The first is negative 2. The second is negative 1. This item will be expanded. It represents integer numbers from 1 to 4, including 1, but not including 4. So it will generate three integer numbers, 1, 2, and 3. This is the result. C underscore will convert the 1D array, A, to a 2D column vector, like this. OK, that was a quick start tutorial of NumPy. The course materials are available on YouTube and GitHub. You can watch the course videos in sequence. If you like this video, please subscribe and share. I'm Yong Wang. Thanks for watching.